because we have data so specific to the U.S. population, the numbers of filled surfaces and all of this data linking amalgam fillings to urine mercury, we were able to use that information to, to calculate dose. Uh, and when you compare that to the reference dose, there are, like I said, they, you know, I presented it today, there's four reference doses or reference exposure levels out there right now, one that I did in 2009, a recent one by Lettmeyer et al., just published in 2010, EPAs from 1995, um, California EPA. California EPA in 2008 decided that the EPA's reference exposure level wasn't precautious enough, and they added further, un uh, further um, precaution to that number. So instead of 0.3, they're at 0 0.03. Based on the st statistics available from NHANES, the recent data, there's roughly 200 million Americans with restored teeth of some type or another, and they, they collectively carry almost 1.5 billion filled teeth. That's a lot of filled teeth, and the vast majority of that is dental amalgam. The exact amount isn't known. There's a large proportion of those people who have all of the fillings in their mouths are dental amalgam. There is a small but growing group in the population who do not have any dental amalgam. They have alternate materials. And then there's a group, probably a large proportion, have a mixture of dental amalgam, composite resin, and other things. Um, so of those 200 million people that have restored fillings, roughly 120 million, I always round it to about a third of the U.S. population, has dental amalgam in their mouth. And if you use the California EPA reference exposure level as your baseline for defining safety, 100% of those people exceed that safe dose. If you use the... Um, United States Environmental Protection Agency's reference exposure level, which is 10 times higher or less conservative than California's, roughly 67, 68 million people exceed that safe level. And there's been much debate at the proceedings today about what's the right study and the right uncertainty factors to apply to come up with the appropriate reference exposure level. And I don't see that as a big deal. I don't really care what number you pick. There's just way too many people that exceed what the US EPA and most state agencies would define as the safe dose. And a lot of people don't like, particularly in regulatory communities, they don't like to use the word safe. Uh, they'll call it a tolerable level, a reference level, the reference air concentration. But what they mean is it's the level that for all we know right now, this is the level that should protect or prevent um, detectable health effects in the vast majority of the population. And what they mean is this is the level they think is safe. And there's just, as far as I'm concerned, too many people who exceed that. Whether it's Canada or the U.S., it really doesn't matter.